All right. Hello, hello. Good evening. My name is Heike Dempster, and I'm the director of engagement and outreach at Young Arts. My pronouns are she, her. The Young Arts campus is situated on the traditional homeland of Native nations, including the Tecesta, the Calusa, the Taino, and today the Mekosuki and the Seminole. We pay our respects to the elders, past, present, and future, and recognize their continued existence and contributions to our community. So thank you all for joining us. This info session is dedicated to the tap dance category of the dance discipline at Young Arts. We, of course, want to encourage all artists age 15 to 18 or in grades 10 to 12 to apply to Young Arts. Young Arts identifies exceptional young artists, amplifies their potential and invests in their lifelong creative freedom. And the Young Arts journey and joining the community really starts with the competition. So um, just a few quick notes. We are recording this session to share it with some few people who may not be able to make it today. And so if you want to protect your privacy, you can change your name to first name only. If you have questions at any point, you can put them in the chat. We will be monitoring that. And you can also raise your hand if you'd like to ask it personally. That's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, so now it's my pleasure to welcome our speakers today. We have um, Anidra Ward, Associate Director of Winner Programs at Young Arts, Tap Coach Marshall Davis Jr. And then we have 2017 Young Arts Winner in Dance, Sydney Burtis, and 2018 Young Arts Winner in Dance, Fumi Shofola. So I'm going to introduce the speakers. Uh, Marsha Davis Jr. was born in Miami Beach and began tap dancing at the African Heritage Cultural Arts Center. By age 11, he was a 1989 Florida winner for the TriStar Pictures Tap Day Contest, um, a promotion for the movie Tap starring Gregory Hines and Sammy Davis Jr. Later, he joined the Tony Award winning Broadway production of Bring in the Noise, Bring in the Funk, choreographed by Savian Glover and directed by George C. Wolfe. Marshall has also performed and taught throughout Europe, Japan, Australia, and the United States. He is the protege of the late Steve Connors of the Connors Brothers. Marshall was a part of the animated film Happy Feet 2, was the associate choreographer for the Broadway show Shuffle Along, and for Don't Bother Me, I Can't Cope, and his latest work is Revelations in Rhythm. Then we have Sydney Burtis, originally from Central Florida. She's a performer, choreographer, teacher, and multidisciplinary artist now based in New York City. In 2017, Sydney was recognized as one of TAP's Next Generation in Dance Spirit magazine and was featured on the October 2018 cover. With a passion for choreography and a gift for storytelling through movement, Sydney founded her tap company Elements of Sound in 2022, which performed at OC Tap Festival, Steps Beyond Foundation, Battery Dance Festival, and Arts On Site. She's an artist in residence at the American Tap Dance Foundation, 2017 Young Arts Award winner, um, and an alum of Jacob's Pillow Tap Program. She's also the co-founder of the Orlando Tap Festival. She's on faculty at Broadway Dance Center, steps on Broadway and tours with Adrenaline and Revive Dance Conventions, and as a guest teacher for Sarah Rice Tap Music Project. She graduated from Pace University with a BA in Communication Studies. Tap dance has always been the forefront of her life, inspiring her to present her honors thesis, Tap Dance as a Form of Nonverbal Communication for Autism Spectrum Disorder. Lastly, we have Fumi Shofola, a New York-based dancer originally from Seattle, Washington. She's a graduate of Pace University, a Young Arts winner, and an alum also of Jacob's Pillow Tap program. Fumi has performed with dance companies that include Caleb Taisha and Company, another alum of Young Arts, um, Demi Remick and Dancers, Alchemy Tap Projects, and Portland Tap Alliance. She's also had opportunities to perform works by Lisa Latouche, Al Blackstone, Letitia Barnes, Lauren Goh, and Jesse Sawyers. In addition to performance, Fumi enjoys exploration in choreography and had the privilege of presenting her work at the 2023 Young Choreographers Festival. She's inspired by music, culinary pursuits, Kurzgesagt videos and all that brings her joy. So on that wonderful note, I pass it off to Marsha. Thank you so much. All right, I'm unmuted now, sorry about that. Thank you, thank you again. Uh, happy to be here. Again, my name is Marshall Davis Jr. I am the tap coach and a reviewer for Young Arts. Uh, basically, my role is during Young Arts Week, during National Young Arts Week, I'm the one who has the proud privilege of sharing time 
with the Young Arts Winners of Distinction. Uh, I get to coach them and see what else I can bring out, them, out of them in regards to their artistry uh, in dealing with tap dance and their performance and expression and communication. Uh, our pronouns are he, him. And again, thank you all for joining us for this tap info session. This evening, our goal is to provide support to our dancers and answer specific questions about the 2024 Young Arts Competition and the TAP application. We'll go over all the key information about the competition and give you a better grasp on the resources available to you as you take this creative journey. All right, uh, a little bit about Young Arts. Young Arts is one of the only organizations that supports artists across 10 disciplines at all stages of development, beginning with the critical moment when they decide to pursue life in the arts and continuing throughout their careers. The young arts experience begins with the application. Artists ages 15 to 18 or grades 10 to 12. Again, artists aged 15 to 18 or grades 10 to 12 are encouraged to apply in the discipline of their choice. There are two award levels, Young Arts Award winners and Young Arts Award winners with distinction. Young Arts Award winners with distinction are invited to attend Young Arts Week in Miami, Florida. All of the Young Arts winners are offered a lifetime of artistic support and ongoing connection with an extraordinary robust network of peers and mentors. This includes grants, residency, and funding opportunities. All right, so we're going to get into the application. Uh, just to talk about the application for a second, uh, when you go on onto the, the website at youngarts.org, uh, you have the TAP application requirements. So one of the first things you'll see, it says, this segment should demonstrate your broadest and most advanced range of technical and musical abilities, incorporate solid grounded steps, cramp rolls, paddle and roll, upper register steps, wings, pullbacks, and steps that turn and travel. Uh, I think some of that is self-explanatory, uh, basically just giving us an idea of your vocabulary, uh, your movement, your presentation, uh, things of that sort. Uh, what I like to encourage uh, those who are uh, submitting the applications, it's, it's a way to give us uh, a sense of your vocabulary. Uh, and then as we move forward to this next section, you'll see that it says, establish the time signature and tempo by verbally counting yourself in, starting with one, before you begin to dance. The initial time signature and tempo should be maintained throughout the entirety of this segment. So basically, as we're moving forward in, with this section, we're asking you to count yourself in, establish your time and your tempo, uh, your time signature. Most people commonly dance in four, uh, but we have had uh, other submissions where people have chosen different time signatures, uh, such as a three or a six. Either way, make sure that you count yourself off. So if you want to say one, two, three, four, one, two, ready and dance and maintain that time and tempo as you're beginning to dance. If you want to count the six, a one, two, three, four, five, six, a one, two, three, four, five and dance, two, three, four, so forth and so on. Uh, so that's mainly what that particular paragraph is talking about. Uh, continuing on. It will inform you that the segment should include a 32 bar chorus with the following. The first 16 bars should be split into two eight bar phrases using the three in the break form for each eight bar phrase. So if you're familiar with the three in the break form, you notice that for the first two bars, you have a two bar phrase, and then you repeat that three times, and then you have your two bar break, giving you a total of eight bars. You do the same thing using the same form, but a different three and a break uh, situation. Uh, and that'll give you your first 16 bars. From there, you're, you're 
allowed to improvise for at least 16 bars, which will continue to fill out that 32 bar chorus. Now, some people choose to improvise longer than the 32 uh, bar chorus. So they'll maybe do an additional 16 bars after they finish that initial 16 bar improvisational section, uh, which is fine. You have about two minutes to complete this technique portion, but you don't have to take up the full two minutes. So if you have a clean 32 where you have your two, three in the breaks, and then you have a nice 16 uh, bar section to improvise, then I would suggest stopping right there. Sometimes less is more. Uh, but if you have, you know, you're capable of doing more and you want to showcase that, uh, that's not a problem either. Feel free to do it. Uh, what I like to advise the applicants, uh, I like to advise them that, again, in using this vocabulary, use, make sure you're using it properly. <laughs> make sure you're using, you know how to pronounce the words, make sure that you are understanding uh, your phrasing, uh, your, your dancing with clarity. Sometimes we reach for steps that may not be there uh, because we think it's a difficult step. But again, if we're going to use those big words, we want to make sure that we're using them in the sentence the correct way. Um, I think that's the most difficult part to probably uh, comprehend from the application. Uh, so again, if there's questions about that, we'll get to those in a minute. Uh, the next section is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you have a two minute solo of your choice with a clear beginning and ending. That's very important. You wanna make sure that your solo has a clear beginning and a clear ending. You can have music of your choice where it could be jazz, Latin, or any other genre. Uh, some people have danced to spoken word. Uh, the choice is really up to you. And we want that solo to be as close to two minutes as possible. We don't want you to go to three minutes or beyond three minutes. Uh, make sure you're as close to three, uh, to, excuse me, to two minutes as possible without going over. Uh, again, with a clear beginning and a clear ending. Sometimes pieces are submitted where the music, the music is just cut off in the middle of the song. Uh, there's no clear ending. So we wanna make sure that when you're submitting these pieces, you have a definite clear ending that shows whether it's a button or some type of fade out where we know it's the end, the end of the piece. Uh, and from there, I think that's pretty much it. If we have any questions uh, in regards question. to, yes. Hi, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. This is Alana. I'm a young arts alumni from the Stone Age. What do you mean by coach? You said you're a coach. What is the role of a coach in the young arts competition or in the young arts organization? Thank you. Okay, so uh, to elaborate on that, <laughs> What it is, and uh, I'll let Sydney and, and Fumi speak to this uh, as well from their experience. I was their tap coach. So when they come to Young Arts Week, my job is to try to inspire them and, and try to coach them up to another level in regards to what Young Arts Week represents. Um, it's not to change the choreography. It's not to say, uh, I'm not giving my personal input on our personal opinions on what they're there to present dance wise. I try to just suggest ideas or have conversations with them that I feel may be enlightening, uh, that will encourage them as far as artists. Sometimes uh, when the dancers are there, they're used to presenting the choreography in the manner of the choreographer. So they're dancing the piece as the person who choreographed the piece for them. So I try to figure out who they are and what they want to say with the piece, how they feel about a certain section, and just allow them to develop their own unique voice as artists. So it's somewhere, you know, something along those lines. If, if so, that and thank you for that. If I could just ask a small clarifying question. 
Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can hear me. Okay, good. Um, so your role only comes in during National Young Arts Week. Is that right? Yes, as far as the as far as the tap coaching. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. But but you're oh. also a reviewer in the competition for the 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 second 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 round. <laughs> Yes, yes. I want to. I'm one of one of the reviewers. So those submissions, I do watch those submissions, and I see, you know, what people submit, and that's why I'm speaking from personal experience. As far as again, a clear ending, a clear beginning to the piece, counting yourself in, dancing with clarity, uh, making sure again, this is another one in regards to the music. Sometimes the music is too loud, where we can't hear the clarity of the taps. Sometimes uh, the camera or, the, or whatever device we're using, whether it's a phone or whatever, sometimes it's wobbly, then we can't really get a good feel for the, for the piece. So it's just certain things in regards to that where uh, the clarity is there, uh, voice, uh, vocabulary, understanding, musicality, rhythm, uh, timing, uh, time, tempo, all of these things are, are, are important in what we're looking for in regards to the submissions. So there's no questions coming into the chat. If anybody has any others, feel free to raise your hand or drop them in the chat. Um, but maybe we can break and take this off to the Young Artists alumni. Yes. Oh, yes, we have a hand raised. Stacy. Hi. Um, I was wondering if it decreases your odds. If you already have a solo and it is close to three minutes, would you recommend trying to cut that down to two minutes? No, I don't think it, as long as it's not like three minutes and over, again, you just want to try to have it as close as possible. But uh Again, if it's a if it's a good solo and the artist is comfortable with it, then I would say submit with what they're comfortable with, as opposed to maybe trying to make changes uh, that may affect their performance or what they're able to display. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else? Nothing in the chat. So okay. let's take it away to Sydney. All right. Okay, just want to make sure everything is set up. Hi. So my name is Sydney Burtis, and I am a tap dancer, teacher, and choreographer. I was a young arts winner in dance with distinction in 2017 feels like forever ago, but is so special. Um, my pronouns are she, they, and about my application journey. Um, I heard about Young Arts a really, really long time ago. I think somewhere between Michelle Dorrance and Demi Remick. I was working with Michelle every now and then in like 2013 and so on and so forth. And she told me about the program along with Demi Remick, who is a Young Arts alumni. And I remember being really little and watching her performance on the Young Arts stage and like really, really dreaming about doing that one day. And I was just so excited. And this, and this was like years before I could even apply. Um, and yeah, um, I selected the pieces that I did because it was my first ever, it was my first like self-choreographed solo. So the piece that I'll be showing you a little bit later is my first ever self-choreographed solo that I did for myself. So since it was this first iteration of an idea that I wanted to do, I really wanted to present that and share that because it was a piece of me that I was starting to share with the world. And then I think I had to have a second solo as well once I like made it into the program. And that was, I guess, probably my second solo that I ever got for myself. Um, my genre of music was more contemporary for the first and a little bit more upbeat for the second. And tips from my application. I pretty much, I mean, I just really wanted to follow the guidelines as closely as possible as far as like when I was applying, 
I talked to Debbie Remick a lot throughout my application journey. And she gave me a lot of advice, like keeping my phone steady, making sure I had those parameters set, time constraints being very specific and making sure that that was in check. Um, she helped me with the technique portion, I would say mainly because I didn't really know what to do. And she was like my closest um, person who had done Young Arts at that time to help me out and give me advice throughout that process. Um, and then my Young Arts Week experience was such a dream come true. It was so, so special right at the top of 2017, um, along with so many other dancers from around the country who were around my age. And being 16, I was 16 when I got um, admitted into the program. And most of the people in my year specifically were seniors. So it was really cool being able to look up to all of them throughout the week as well. Um, I was really, really honored to have Marshall as my coach throughout the week. And he inspired me in so many ways, ways that I still talk about and describe to this day. One of my one of my favorite memories, I love to talk about it. I've talked about it a lot recently, was Marshall really talking about shading and trying to find specific tones. And he would just stamp stamp his foot at a certain tone that he was trying to get. And my goal was to match that tone. And even if it was the slightest bit off, he was like, nope, got to do it again. And we just kept going over and over and over to find that. And even just like that one little moment really influenced the way that I tap dance today, really influenced how I shade, the way that I think about accents and thinking about paragraphs and words and sentences and how different um, tap dance ideas pieced together are very much influenced by Marshall and the experience of Young Arts Week. And he helped a lot with my solo. I feel like when I first submitted, it was pretty flat as far as like how it sounded. There weren't many waves, like choreographically there were some, but not really sound wise. So he helped me fine tune a lot of those different ideas, like what can be reached into a high tone, what can be a lower tone, and what is the purpose of doing those things and everything in between. Um, it was also really incredible throughout the experience as a whole to work with different choreographers. We would have different classes that are like improvisation based. We would have different classes with other genres, which was really interesting. We got to have a lot of collaborative experiences, experiences in between as well. Um, one of my favorite memories was actually on like the last day. We did a lot of like seminars in the last day. And me, um, one of the choreography winners and a couple of the singer-songwriter winners, we all got into like a ballroom really, really, really early in the morning. And we were able to like collaborate on this little song that they had created. And my friend Shaylee and I from Hawaii, we were dancing um, along with them and just able to create a little tiny piece of something. But it was one of my favorite moments throughout that experience. Um, so yeah, and it was really beautiful to be able to talk to so many people from different disciplines as well. Like any of the meal times, we would try to infiltrate with um, other disciplinary winners. We got to see all of their shows, which was really, really incredible to be inspired by all of that. And yeah, um, since then, I've been able to actually, oh, sorry, not yet, performance video. Here we go. I'm going to share my screen. Um, let me bring it back to here. Just inevitable distance, 
twist their bitterness, I give her too much, she'll be That was me from 2017. <laughs> um, yeah, so many fun memories, so many special moments in that time. Truly, truly so grateful for that experience. And thank you, Marshall, for helping me throughout that entire week with that piece and so much more. Um, since then, I've been able to do some collaborative opportunities within Young Arts. I was able to perform at the Met Gala in, I think it was, 2018 or 2019 in New York City and then I was also able to perform in Aspen Colorado with some other incredible musicians out there um, and also since then within the ask no sorry within the Met Gala experience I was able to meet an incredible pianist named Isaac Carlin who's done a lot with Young Arts as well and we've been able to have a lot of collaborative opportunities together we were able to perform at Little Island last summer, which is really, really incredible. And just throughout that time, we always try to get in the studio and collaborate and jam together, which has been really, really fun. Um, and I'm able, luckily, to teach a lot throughout New York City and abroad. So that's been really, really special since Young Arts to be able to share everything that I've learned from Marshall and so many of my teachers throughout all my years of tap dance. I've been able to start my own company since then that Pumi is actually a part of. So super special to have her here too as one of my best friends. And just, yeah, I feel like that's pretty much it for me. I'm living in New York City right now and teaching a lot, traveling a lot. And yeah, that's about it. I guess, are there any questions that I might be able to answer for you? Nothing in the chat so far. What Someone you? asked from the Young Arts Week dates, I think. Yes. So, uh, yes, it was dropped in the chat. Young Arts Week in January is the 7th to the 14th of 2024. Thank you so much for having me. I feel like with that, we can probably turn it over to Fumi. Yes, hello. Um, I'm Fumi Shopala, and my pronouns are she, her. I'm originally from Seattle, Washington, but as mentioned before, I'm now living in New York, um, and also mentioned before as a recent graduate of Pace University. Um, I'll share a little bit about my experience and the application. I actually heard about Young Arts from Sydney, which is crazy. Um, we were roommates at Jacob's Pillow in 2017, and she told me about it said I should apply and I said okay <laughs> I was sold on it sounded amazing and yeah when I got home from the pillow that was one of the first things I like shared with my mom I called Sid she helped me with um you know her advice and go following through with the application process um as far as actually you know filming the application uh the biggest advice was following those guidelines that are provided you know if for example the time is no longer than a minute, then try your best to really stick with that because you can't go wrong with um, 
the very helpful uh, advice and guidelines that are provided. I ended up going with a solo that I had competed with my studio the previous season, uh, choreographed by Katie Black. And it's something I went with because it was a piece that I enjoyed and I had had lots of opportunities for feedback prior to that, different context, of course, but um, it was something that I felt I'd really feel comfortable with and that I could represent myself well with. Um, I did end up doing a shorter version. I remember we talked about that a little bit earlier. Someone asked that question. Um, so yeah, good to get that like full insight from Marshall. Um, and let's see, my experience with the, with, you know, the filming process, you know how it goes. The great thing about being on camera is that you can send in your best version, but then on the flip side, there's the hundreds and hundreds of different versions, you know? So I would say my advice would be making sure you have enough time that you can, you know, go back to it, um, take a minute and like step away, breathe, and make sure that you can send in something that you feel good with and that you can really feel proud of. Um, I love my experience at Young Arts, of course. Um, it was so incredible to be surrounded by so many talented and kind people. Um, something that was really encouraged like right away from the first day was collaboration. And while at the time I felt like I was more reserved, honestly, like overwhelmed, just I'm here, wow. <laughs> um, the great thing is that those like connections and the encouragement and the tools that we received like don't stop at the event. So it was still something that was super valuable and I was able to um, use during my time there, but also use that now, I'll say in real life. <laughs> um, in working with Marshall, that was something that was also so, so valuable. Um, I'd say after that experience, it really, really like impacted my dancing and my approach to what I do. I know that I had a very like follow, follow rules, do what is asked to the team mindset, but we worked on seeing how we can like bring myself into the choreography that's given to me and really seeing how you can um, almost use it as, um, we almost did it as an improvisational exercise or able to use it as a structure so that you can still uh, play and weave in and out. And that was something that I, I took home and it really contributed to, you know, my like joy in the dance too. Yes, I love it, I enjoy it, but how much more fun when you can just dance for the sake of dancing, right? Um, with that, I think it's now time to share my video. Let's see if I can get the share screen up. Olafum Milayo Shafala, Carnation, Washington.
yeah that is the video <laughs> um yeah again that was you know 2018 I was 17 there and yeah it's crazy watching it and just thinking about um you know the person I was then and am now it's a really great um uh, experience to be able to like reflect on that kind of thing uh, beyond the winter year, uh, it's really exciting to see where, like, you know, the other winners from that time, where my peers are now. Um, I've run into a lot of people in the most random of contexts, you know, like at the box office, after a show, at Trader Joe's, that happened one day, and that was unreal. <laughs> um, I, it's also really cool to see that a lot of the artists that I look up to, both like musicians and dancers, that they are also alum, and I feel like that common experience is really valuable. Again, relating to like connecting with people and really diving into that community. Right now, uh, again, I'm living in New York, uh, recent grad, really looking forward to uh, becoming more involved in the dance community and uh, seeing what is available and around. Um, something that I'm most excited and looking forward to doing is performing at the Joyce Theater with Caleb Teicher um, in December and also being able to have the opportunity to work with some other amazing people um, that are also alum. Of course, I would say Sydney Burtis and, um, and Demi Remick as well. She's amazing, incredible. Um, I would say that's about it as far as, go, as far as my experience goes. And yeah, thanks for letting me share. If there are any questions, we can move into that now. Alana. Hi, um, this question is for the dancers. Um, I'm class of 03 and I remember what it was like uh, working with the choreographer on the artistic solo. Can you guys speak to um, the choice of who you were going to ask to choreograph that? I'm sure you had many options and like how impactful it was um, and specifically like, I don't know, the, the process of um, the artistic solo, because that's a, that's a real important um, piece. And maybe is there anything that you uh, think you is important to share about just how that artistic solo part comes together? Thank you. Um, yeah, I did go with something that was already choreographed, um, something I had worked on before. And while I was working on another piece, um, with that same choreographer for the following season, there was something about um, that first one that I just felt connected to. It was something that I felt very happy with and that I could relax. And I would say, I know it's cheesy, but be myself. <laughs> um, so that was something that was really important for me in deciding what to do. Sydney, do you want to contribute to that? Yeah, um, for me, my solo was self-choreographed. Choreography since I was really little was always a journey that I really wanted to take on. I have always loved choreographing. And so when I started on this choreographic journey, I knew that that's what I wanted to submit. And I guess similar to Fumi, I think that was my solo for the previous year too. So it was already like really comfortable. I already felt really at home with it. And I wanted to present something that felt really comfortable for me. And my song was a little bit more on the contemporary side as well. And that was um, kind of a collaboration that I wanted to play with and explore too. So I thought that that would be really cool to submit for Young Arts as there are going to be so many dancers of so many backgrounds there. And then I'd be able to get the insight from Marshall on the ins and outs of it as well. Uh, Sydney, may I ask a follow-up question? Yes, you can. <laughs> um, how long were you working on your solo before you submitted it to Young Arts? I would say it was a full year, probably within the application deadlines, maybe a slightly over a year, but it was already like fully choreographed um, by the fall of, if it was probably by the fall of 2015, it was fully choreographed, performed it throughout 2015, 2016, submitted my application in, in fall of 2016. Okay, and Funmi, what about you? How long were you uh, working on your solo Funmi before you uh, applied? 
Um, I would say it was about the same time frame. I had learned it the or begin learning it the summer before. <laughs> um, and then by the time the application came around, it had been maybe, I'd say like two or two or three months since I had, that's not true. I would say one or two months since I had last performed it. Um, so it was a matter of bringing it back and, uh, you know, refreshing it a little bit so that I would feel comfortable uh, filming that and sending it in. Thank you. And also, I'd like, I'd like to add uh, a couple of things. And we've had other winners who just found out about the application and, and found out about Young Arts from a uh, post on social media, maybe a couple of months prior to uh, the deadline for the application. Uh, I remember, I believe uh, Cypher Goings was one of those dancers and he submitted, uh, he found out, you know, basically submitted at the last minute, but he was still able to present something that was, you know, very nice. And uh, he was one of the winners of, with distinction. So I think a lot of it depends on, on the dancers, uh, what they're capable of. But I also wanted to add this as well, is in, in looking at the examples that previous winners uh, have submitted, also the, the main thing you hear them speaking about is them being true to themselves and how they felt about the piece. And that really comes across in the work. Uh, sometimes uh, we have submissions where they'll say, okay, Fumi and Sydney uh, won, so let me see what they did and try to come as close as possible to doing something uh, along the same lines. And it, it, it doesn't read the same uh, for, for a lot of the dancers. Uh, again, so my advice is be true to yourself uh, because what you express through the dance and what you communicate through the dance will be more sincere. So there's a sincerity, uh, a truth in the artistry uh, that I think will help other uh, videos stand out from others in regards to those who are dancing from that perspective and those who are just trying to come up with a formula because they think because this previous winner did it, then I should do it. Um, so that would be uh, my advice in regards to that as well. Thank you, Marshall. That's wonderful advice. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. So I will talk a little bit about the application and competition adjudications process. So the application is currently open and the deadline is October 13th, Friday, October 13th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern and that's 8.59 p.m. Pacific. Um, it is for, as Marshall mentioned earlier, if you are between the ages of 15 and 18 or in grades 10 through 12. Uh, on December 1st. So if you meet both of those uh, age and grade requirements, fantastic. But if you meet one and not the other, you're still eligible to apply. Um, and again, that is by October 13th. Friday, October 13th is the deadline. Um, and this year we have the application on a portal called Kaleidoscope. So if you visit our website at youngarts.org, um, you can review the requirements there for what you want to apply in and also get access to the platform called Kaleidoscope uh, where the application is. And the application is a two-step process this year. So you fill out your main application, which is basic contact information, parent, educator, um, school, all of that. And then it will automatically take you to the TAP application where you would submit your videos. Um, and so just make sure that you complete both of those steps by October 13th, both have to be complete. Um, and the reason we have it separated out like that is because the judges don't receive any identifying information on you. It is only your videos that you are submitting to them and they cannot see anything else. Uh, so whatever your school you're attending, what, what educator you're acknowledging, none of that is given to the judges for them to adjudicate. It is solely the videos. Um, there is an application fee of $35 per category, discipline category that you apply in. You can apply in as many as you'd like. Just remember there is that $35 fee for each one. And we do have fee waivers available uh, to those in need. Very simple. Just upload a letter stating that you are in need to have your fee waived and it will automatically be waived. Um, 
Do, 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 do. As Marshall mentioned earlier, it is uh, two award levels, award uh, Young Arts Award winner and Young Arts Award winner with distinction. And winner with distinction is invited to participate in National Young Arts Week in January. Uh, next year's dates are the 7th to the 14th. Um, and it is held in Miami, Florida, and that is an all expenses paid trip. Um, the, there is no cost to the winner. Um, we are, are also uh, having other programming for all levels of winners um, throughout, excuse me, throughout the season next year as well. Um, and another really great uh, exclusive thing to Young Arts winners is called Young Arts Post. And once you get named a winner at all at all levels, you're invited to join Young Arts Post, which is uh, kind of like a Facebook um, that is exclusive to Young Arts winners only. Um, and you can go on there and find out all the opportunities that are available to you. And that is a lifetime of support. So not just past your winning year, but even further on throughout your career, um, as these two lovely artists just, just expressed. Um, and you can find all opportunities. You, you can go and collaborate with um, fellow winners from across the last 41 plus years that we've been established. Um, and there are over 20,000 alumni on that platform. Um, and yeah, you there is a blog. You can go in and chat with other artists, other winners, um, find opportunities, provide opportunities. If you have an opportunity that you'd like to collaborate with another winner on, um, you can post your own uh, on Young Arts Post. So um, any questions about anything that's been said tonight? please feel free to raise your hand or drop them in the chat. Um, and again, just a reminder of the deadline, October 13th, Friday, October 13th at 11.59 p.m. And both parts of that application have to be complete and submitted. <laughs> um, and even after this uh, info session comes to a close, if you think of any questions after that um, or something comes to mind uh, that you want to discuss, um, there are several avenues available. Um, find us on social media, DM, um, give us a give us a call, um, and you can also submit questions to uh, apply at youngarts.org via email. Um, this has been dropped in the chat too. There's uh, YouTube videos on our YouTube channel, Young Arts YouTube channel for past winners uh, performances uh, for several years. And um, there's a list of our FAQs on our website as well. And um, a calendar for more info sessions coming up. We have a couple more scheduled if you're interested in other disciplines and categories. Um, there are a couple more coming up before the deadline. And yeah, again, uh, I want to thank Marshall, Sydney, Fumi for coming uh, and sharing all of their expertise with us. And thank you all for being on this call. Um, again, if you have questions that come to mind after this, please feel free to contact us. And that email address again is apply at youngarts.org. Uh, oh, someone just asked, where can we watch the recording of this video? So this will be up on our YouTube channel in the next couple of weeks. So go ahead and look out, look out for that. Um, but yes, it is recorded and it will be posted and sent out. All right. Thank you all again so much for being here with us. Apply at youngarts.org and we look forward to reviewing your application. Thank you all so much. Thank you.